folks, it's been a hot minute, and I think it's time to give Gaia Streaming Services another chance. Especially since they're going over Denisovan, sometimes called Denisovan, so I thought I would just see what they had to say. Give them a fair hearing, you know? So not a super strong start, but it could always get better from here. On second thought, I think I might need to get some kind of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug to kind of prepare my body for this video. And maybe some horse tranquilizers. In 2013, Russian photographer Georgi Sidorov discovered a colossal megalith in a remote wilderness area in Siberia. During an expedition in the foothills of Mount Shoria near Altai, Sidorov came upon a great wall of granite blocks. What made his discovery unusual was that these gargantuan stones had flat surfaces, right angles, and sharp corners, reminiscent of Cyclopean masonry. It's always those photographers who are going out there and proving the existence of giants, isn't it? I also thought the term Cyclopean masonry was perhaps a Gaia original. It turns out it's just an actual term that is used to describe the process of cutting large blocks uh, and using them to build megalithic structures that ancient people, you know, commonly did, which is why there's a word for it. And it's not usually associated with giants. The thing is that nature does not happen to see straight angles. Oh, I see. It seems that our boy here might be a teriologist, huh? Well, let me put it this way. All energy in the universe is expressed in motion. All motion is expressed in waves. All waves are curved. So where does the straight lines come from to make the platonic solids? There are no straight lines. All blocks are built like in a brick wall. All of them have straight angles, like a castle. There are thousands of clues that say this formation is built by a form of intelligence. Wow, a thousand. That's a lot. So surely, surely we're going to get some of those clues now, right? Like some, maybe some clues that could perhaps tell us how this type of formation isn't actually just geologic in nature and is in fact created by like large people like specifically what i'm thinking is maybe some kind of way that they're going to present these blocks are not maybe an example of like spheroidal weathering you know where like we see chemical weathering occurring at these sort of orthogonal joints you know like a common geologic phenomena that happens in numerous places, you know? And that's kind of what I'm hoping to see. I've got my, my hopes set pretty high, but we did also quote Abraham Lincoln about North American giants. So perhaps I need to, to temper my expectations. The beauty and precision of this 130 foot structure has left archeologists with no explanation for how such an arrangement could have formed naturally. Yeah, hi, um, is this the archaeologists? Mm-hmm. Well, I've got this geologic formation that I really need to get a diagnosis on. I was thinking maybe you guys could, could come over here and assess that for me. Call a geologist? Do I look like a f***ing moron to you? Geologists have estimated that the largest blocks of granite at Mount Shoria weigh three to four thousand tons. Hi, geologists, I just have a real quick question. How much do you think the average block at Mount Shoria weighs? Yeah, like maybe like three to four thousand tons? Yeah, no, yeah, well, it's for a documentary. About what? Well, it's a documentary about rocks. Giant rocks. Before this, the pregnant woman stone of Baalbek, weighing 1,500 tons, was the largest single stone used in an ancient site. You have these beautiful polygonal walls, they are perfect straight lines and perfect right angles. You have these 
massive blocks of granite that looked like this. Someone's taken a big diamond drill and sawed them right down the middle on granite ethical effort. So in classic Gaia fashion, we have gone from large rocks shaped like cubes, or perhaps large rectangular shapes, to we find rectangular shapes in smaller forms in like megalithic human civilization sites from yesteryear, to big humans must have made these specific massive blocks. It's airtight, what can you say? The Russian scientists that went there, they discovered some things which cannot be explained by nature, which are these beautiful round, almost um, pot surfaces where they've taken a drill and they've formed the perfect depression. And they also have these perfect tunnels and these doorways that seem to be very deliberately put there. So maybe what we're doing here is taking an entire mountain that's been completely shaped by human hands. So in case you're wondering, Freddy Silva is noted for being a leading researcher of alternative history, as well as ancient knowledge, sacred sites, and the interaction between temples and consciousness. Um, and this is something that Freddy has put on his own website by choice. So let that sink in as we maybe consider the average price perhaps of a PR agent. It will shock you to know that this kind of weathering is also not uncommon. It creates taffoni, which is a type of like Swiss cheese rock as it's kind of colloquially called, or also honeycomb weathering. Uh, and it's actually described as a type of weathering that occurs in clusters looking very much like a sponge, which is nearly always on a vertical or inclined face protected from surface runoff. You know, kind of like what we just saw. But yeah, I mean, another explanation would be that, like, giant humans created them using ancient drills. The megalithic structure discovered in the Altai Mountains near the Denisovan Cave uh, harkens really to structures like Baalbek and Lebanon, uh, these cyclopean megalithic structures that are hundreds of tons in weight. Stones so large that even our best equipment today can could not possibly even come close to lifting them. And uh, that they were using a type of science and mathematical understanding that just wasn't available to our ancient ancestors. Jack Carey is also an author of such hit books like Paranormal Planet and American Sorcerer. So top brass only, as always, for Gaia. Now, I think it's important to note that when we look at ancient monuments that were clearly created by humans, or perhaps suspected to be created by humans, we usually find a couple of things. We find, one, the presence of humans nearby, be it in the form of bones or other clearly human hallmarks, like tools or hearths, things of this nature. And we usually find that this kind of structure is precluded from being created by any kind of known natural process. If there is a natural process that could have created whatever structure it is that we're looking at, it usually has to be considered. Everything about Mount Shoria could have been created naturally. All of this stuff, this these right angles by spheroidal weathering, the caves, and caves forth naturally all the time, and there's a reason why they're often used as shelters, not only by humans, but by other animals as well. Those little pockmarks, again, also have an explanation in natural geology, as previously mentioned. So why are we proposing that it was made by humans? Nothing about this is human unique. Nothing about this, unlike what our, what our boys said, none of this cannot be explained by natural processes. Where's the writing, right? Cuneiform, the art, the, the presence of humans. None of this is there. And so there is no precedence for claiming that it was created by humans, let alone giant ones. If Georgi Sidorov's discovery is real, could it be evidence that remote Siberia was once home to an advanced civilization? Near this discovery of the megalithic wall, scientists believe they have found bones from a new species. Could these places be linked? Yeah, they're close. Just like walking distance, right? But that is a classic from Gaia and the ancient aliens ilk, that is it possible that normal thing leads to alien thing, or giant thing, or cryptid thing? Like, is it possible? 
I guess in the same way that it's possible the moon is actually made of cheese and we just really got all the chemistry wrong. It turns out if you, dr if you drill just a little bit further down, the whole thing is Swiss or Gouda. The moon strikes me as a Gouda. The point being possible in like, like a theoretical sense, like it's possible the earth was created with all its memories and geologies intact last Thursday. Is there anything or any reason to think that? No. In 2008, archaeologists made world headlines when they unearthed a Paleolithic finger bone from a juvenile female estimated to be 41,000 years old. Further DNA analysis indicated the finger was from a previously unknown and extinct homonym subspecies. Homonym subspecies. Homonym subspecies. I mean, have you seen that new game show homonym? Your next word is meat. Oh boy, um, like when two people run into each other. Oops, sorry, it's the other one. Oh, homonyms, eh? I've not heard of this clade. Surely he doesn't mean hominin. Surely he doesn't mean hominin, right? Surely he doesn't mean- These previously unknown ancestors were christened with the name Denisovan. The Denisovans are probably the most exciting discovery in the origins of humanity for decades. I mean, arguably even in the last hundred years. I mean, Denisovans are awesome. Don't get me wrong. We know these guys from effectively just their genomes, which we've been able to sequence by the small amount of fossil material that we have. But the most exciting? I, I just don't know that I buy that. It, a really important thing to point out here is that they're called ancestors, an unknown human ancestor. Ancestor implies that we descended from them, which there is no support for. In fact, there's heavy support in the opposite. There is an enormous amount of statistical support for the idea that we're sister species, just like we're sister species to Neanderthal. We all share a common ancestor. We did not descend from them. We actually get a stint here where Gaia surprisingly gets a lot right. I'm not going to play it because it's kind of long, but some of the things that they said are that modern humans today in certain parts of the world, specifically Southeast Asia, still carry Denisovan's DNA within them now, much like the Westerners, people in Eurasia, uh, Western Eurasia tend to carry 1-4% to of Neanderthal DNA. They also talk about the duration of this species, how long they live. They said at least 200,000 years. It's probably quite a bit longer than that. Uh, but, you know, kudos for being in the ballpark of right with this section. Uh, and then they hit us with this. They were of extreme size, not just broad, but of extreme height, perhaps even as much as seven feet tall. That's just completely bogus. That's just incorrect. No, we, we don't know really anything about how tall these guys were, but if they're anything like their closest relative, Neanderthals, because Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, and Denisovans are more closely related to each other than either is to humans, then they were probably quite a bit shorter than us. Broader, yes, just like Neanderthals. They probably weighed more, too, and had maybe even larger brains than we do. But humans are like the elves of this Middle Kingdom era of hominins. We're quite tall, and we're quite cognitive in the right places in the frontal lobe, um, we might be outweighed by them, but they were not giants. There is just absolutely nothing in the hands to, to suggest that. But the DNA from these fossil remains have told us so much. It has told us quite a bit. Just not that they're seven feet tall and could move blocks that weighed three to 4,000 tons and make drills. They talk again about the genetic similarities between Neanderthals, Denisovans, and humans, as well as the fact that interbreeding was going on. Uh, and then we get this postulation. We have to ask, if, if we're talking of records going back hundreds of thousands of years, is it possible that these other human species uh, reached a high level of development uh, during their tenure of life on Earth? Is it, is it possible that they were uh, advanced in, in, in some way? I find this to be a very silly and kind of speciesist sentiment, this idea that Denisovans had to be like super advanced for Homo sapiens to deign to breed with them and with Neanderthals, as if we don't already try to breed with everything that will let us, unfortunately. 
Denisovans, whether or not they were using technologies that rivaled those of archaic Homo sapiens, and even that might be a push, it depends on, on whether or not the artifacts that we're currently attributing to them do in fact deserve to be attributed to them. None of that diminishes the worth of the species. This was an intelligent, uh, cognitive, and widespread species that lived for a very long time and thrived in the environments that it dwelled in, along with Neanderthals. They both were incredibly prolific, incredibly successful species. They don't have to live like modern humans do in order to have worth and be considered intelligent. One could potentially make the argument that if success is defined by tenure on this planet, then they bested us in many ways, unless humans plan on, you know, living around for another 200, 300,000 years. The Denisovans had to be much more advanced than what they're being uh, credited with. Um, I say that because of the discovery of a piece of jewelry that they found in the uh, original Denisovan cave that dated 40,000 years ago. It was made of a green polished rock and anthropologists believe that this jewelry was only worn on very special occasions. That indicates a culture. It indicates art. It indicates a higher understanding of reality. These aren't people that were simply clubbing animals to death and using their furs. These were people that were literally constructing jewelry. That's something um, a lot of anthropologists are uneasy with because it, it shows a depth of understanding and, and uh, beauty in their culture that really shouldn't have existed with such ancient hominids. This is also kind of a goofy sentiment. I don't know that we can attribute that bracelet definitively to Denisovans. We might be able to, it might be the case. It's certainly associated with Denisovans. But at 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals were still wandering around and so was Homo sapiens. So, eh. I don't know that we can say with certainty that the Denisovans did indeed make it. It might have, and if it did, that's awesome. And I don't know of any paleoanthropologist who would think otherwise. No one would find that to be uh, denigrating to Homo sapiens. In fact, it is the paleoanthropological community that maintains that humans are not the only, you know, epic conclusion to the hominin lineages. Right, we might well go extinct just like all of the other hominins did, and we'll end up another footnote in the beautiful tale of the tree of life, just like all these other guys did. And we might do so having lived a very small amount of time compared to the likes of Homo erectus or Denisovans or Neanderthals. Yes, they might have made jewelry. Neanderthals made jewelry. Homo erectus may have made jewelry. Homo sapiens made jewelry, of course, and Neanderthals did too. The point being, there were a lot of hominins 40,000 years ago that were capable of doing things like making bracelets. Humans at the time were still relatively archaic, at least compared to now, although anatomically they were probably modern. We still hadn't reached agriculture, which wouldn't be until 10,000 years ago, so 30,000 years to go. But, I mean... It's not like making jewelry is the hallmark of being human. You get to be human if you're a member of genus Homo. There's a wide range of cultures that different hominins displayed. You don't get ousted from the club if you don't have one specific kind of culture. Because, well, chimpanzees today utilize culture. All culture is is having some kind of tradition that you pass on to your offspring that they then pass on to their offspring with some kind of arbitrary rule attached to it. It certainly doesn't mean that Denisovans was like uber advanced and you know using power drills and diamond cutters to make geologic formations. The archaeologists kept digging a bit more as they tend to do and they found that when they got to a layer that's about 380,000 years they found tools there, they found a needle, they found certain artifacts that looks like bracelets and other ornaments and they also found the ring which has been beautifully shaped out of rock. It has been obviously machined and polished. I know this is gonna come as a shock to a lot of you but it turns out Ancient cultures made jewelry like rings and bracelets before the advent of machines. So I, I don't really know what to tell you there, boys. Horse DNA has also been found inside the cave itself, suggesting that the Denisovans not only uh, hunted horses, but probably domesticated them and may even have ridden horses. And this is probably tens of thousands of years before it was even thought possible that you could ride horses, something that was considered conventionally to only have occurred 
in Bronze Age times. What on earth would make you think that? If you find horse DNA in a cave, they probably were eating horses. Why would you think that they were domesticating them? Were there saddles in there with stirrups attached? A bridle? A skeleton of a member of Denisovans literally riding a Perzawolski's horse? So then they talk briefly about how Denisovan DNA can be found in many modern populations, even ones that aren't necessarily close to Denisova Cave. So places like Southeast Asia, Australia, North American people groups can have Denisovan DNA. And this is really interesting stuff. Uh, but then they go on to say this. If Denisovans roamed the earth for thousands of years, crossbreeding with other sapiens, it could explain how traces of their DNA have been found thousands of miles from Siberia in North America. It is almost certain that the Denisovans and their hybrid descendants ended up coming into the Americas. Indeed, it's now been found that in several different Native American um, peoples. And that's just really, really dumb. Right? You don't have to have had ancestors that came to where you currently live just because you have DNA from them. They can stay where they are and have descendants that then move. It doesn't mean that Denisovans came to North America because certain North American populations of Amer North American Indians have that DNA within them. Now, what is the far more likely answer to this question as to why North Americans today have some Denisovan DNA that indigenous North Americans do, is that there was hybridization, as we already know there was, between ancient Homo sapiens and Denisovans, and it is those ancient Homo sapiens groups that then crossed the Bering Strait and sort of settled in North America. Not necessarily even hybrids, right? Just maybe descendants who have ancestry with some hybrids. This isn't like Denisovans shepherded over groups of their hybrid children and Homo sapiens. It's very woo to me to suggest that when there is no support for it whatsoever. Denisovan DNA exists, and this proves that they were the giants of legend, and that they are responsible for the human skeletons, the oversized human skeletons that are found in mound complexes all over North America. Oh, you mean those hoaxed skeletons? Those Photoshop skeletons that used to appear on like 2009 YouTube thumbnails? Those ones? Where are those big skeletons, do you suppose? Produce for me the bones, my lord. Bring them to me now. Bring me the bones of these giant ancient men. It deserves to be noted here that, like, these skulls are being showed as if one of them is, like, ancient Denisovans and the other is modern humans. They did this earlier, too, where they showed uh, a human skull and then a Neanderthal skull and then a Denisovan skull that was clearly just a scaled-up Neanderthal skull. How do I know this, you might ask? Because we don't have any Denisovan skulls right now. Denisovans are known almost entirely from a few bits and pieces, jaw bones, finger bones, things like that, uh, and an entire genome, which is really, really cool. Uh, but we do not have a lot of fossil material from them. Now, a lot of people think that perhaps the, the Dragon Man skull, the Harbin skull, may turn out to be uh, a member of Denisovans, Denisovans, which would mean that Homo Longhi is actually the official name for Denisovans. Some people really don't like that idea. Some people propose that it might be reasonable. I think that it's quite likely that we've got skulls sitting in drawers somewhere that have been previously attributed to maybe uh, Asian Homo erectus or even um, sort of Eurasian, uh, but Eastern Eurasian Neanderthals that may end up being Denisovans. We've got a lot of material to go through. Um, but we do know that they weren't giants who were seven feet tall uh, and looked like that. Then Freddy comes back on and says some reasonable stuff before just casually tossing in that it's not the seven foot tall Denisovans that were responsible for the giants of America, but actually those were some kind of different 15 foot tall humans that I guess wandered around unabetted 
by the square cube law? It might be not be so obvious to us because we live in a very day-to-day -day basis in a very short period of time. But I do believe that we adapt as a species and I think that the adaptation is happening right as we speak right now. We have climate change that's upon us. How are humans going to look 50, 100, 1,000 years from now? I bet they will look much different. I think it's all relative. But there was a time when the Neanderthals were relative to the Earth. There was a time when 15-foot people were relative to the Earth. And the time for Homo sapiens also came along. I demand to see the bones, Freddy. Bring me these large fellows. And another finishing monologue with a bunch of dumb bullshit, as usual. I and then after school comes back on and they're like, you can use the code after school to get Gaia streaming 20% off. It's just an absolute nightmare to behold, honestly. Anyways, that's about all the Gaia that I can take. Um, after school is aiding and of course supporting this pseudoscience and effectively it's just a bunch of nonsense. It's just very, very frustrating to see, quite frankly, especially because After School is such a big channel and sometimes they put out stuff that really isn't that bad. Um, and then they sprinkle in the woo and sometimes the sprinkles are very large, so large in fact that they splatter the ice cream all over the place. Uh, bottom line, don't support After School, don't support Gaia, um, and uh, I really hope you enjoyed this, my gentle and of course very modern apes. Please do take care of yourselves.